Oh, wow. So he cheated on you with a prostitute. Yeah. So, yeah, he just kept saying, no, just calm down. And then finally when he opens his phone, I'm like, who is this? And he's like, oh, we went out with the friends and, you know, this happens. No, no, Kayla, it's madness. That does not just happen. What's going on, everybody? This is John. Yo, yo, yo. Hope you're doing so good. Hope you're doing so good. Hope your marriage is doing well. Hope you're doing well. If you're single, I hope you're living your best life, whatever even that means. I can't even say that with a straight face. I'm living my best life. I don't know what that means. I hope that things are going all right for you. On the whole, I think uh, people are doing okay. And I also think on the whole, people are also struggling. I think it's a both and. And that's what this show is about. It's sitting right in that gap between, hey, things could be so much better and things are awful. I'm trying to figure out what do we do next? What comes next? If you want to be on the show, we talk about mental health, your emotional health, talk about um, your anxiety, your OCD, your hoarding, whatever, your depression, whatever you got going on, or your joy, your laughter, trying to find hope again, talk about your marriage, your kids, whatever you got going on. If you want to be on the show, go to johndeloney.com slash ask, A-S-K, or give me a buzz at 1-844-693-3291. It's 1-844-693-3291. Um, and don't forget, please write your reviews, leave as many stars as you feel comfortable. Anything less than five stars, just review Kelly. Just, just write Kelly. Two and a half stars. I'd like stars. you to know how many reviews and comments and stuff we get from people that say, be nicer to Kelly. I don't send them to you, mm. but I would just like you to know that there are quite a few. Are there? Yeah, there are. How could I possibly be nicer to you? I'm as nice as they could. I'm not. I am. I. I'm not mean. I'm no. Not. Pe- and I'm actually, I do feel the need to defend you. I really do. Every time it happens, <laughs> I, I so want to send an email. This is be like, okay, y'all don't understand. It's not John being mean. And there's this one woman, bless her heart. She was like, it looked like Kelly was about to cry. I thought, oh, honey, you don't know me very well. No, you've only wept once. And that was when, like, I mean, yeah. when Chris Stapleton did the, <laughs> did the Super Bowl. The only two <laughs> things that make me cry are sports and marine and military stuff. So I don't know. I'm not a crier. But the, you and I have a very, very brother-sister relationship. And people think... Where I'm the right brother and you're the sister. And you're no, like, oh, no. Where I'm the sister d- just puts up with the brother. You're the way, way yeah. older sister who's kind of messed things up. And her Four younger years. brother... No chance. And her younger Four brother... Four years. How old did you just turn? 46? Huh? Uh, me? Yeah. 33. Bull. Bull. Oh, my God. Liar. Listen, for those of y'all listening, we're getting a little derailed. If you knew how much... Botox Kelly has in her face right now. It's staggering. It is staggering. They use a turkey baster. They don't even use like a like a syringe. It's amazing. It's amazing. You do look beautiful though. It's a lot of work, but you look beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> <You suck. laughs> I don't even color my hair. Yeah, and, you should probably you, edit yeah, that out. Yeah. You should probably edit that out. All right, let's go out to Sydney, Australia, and talk to Kayla. What's up, Kayla? Hello. How are we doing? Um, all right. How are you? I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. Just we're just a little bit of mayhem today. How can I help? Thanks for calling. Um, um I found my husband cheated on a weekend night through his phone. Um just not sure how to go forward with that, how to handle myself. I'm trying to put myself together. But, yeah. I'm yeah. so, uh, like, I'm, I'm, I'm heartbroken for you. I can hear it on you. How long have y'all been married? Eight years. Eight years. Is this the first time you know of this happening? Um, yes, that's the thing. I've never tried to look into his phone in that way and never had a doubt or anything. And this night I just had a feeling because I call him after midnight. Um. I thought he was going to be back by then. He didn't answer my call, tried a couple of times. I tried his friend that he went with, um, and then he calls me back, but he was still busy, not giving me a fixed time, and he was going to be back. Um, He comes home in the morning, goes to bed, and, you know, when I look into his phone, there were these 
numbers that I tried calling back and yeah. Um, um, who were, were they? Like, t- tell me what happened. What um, were the numbers? So it was the, Did you just call strange, was, like old girlfriends? Like, who were you calling? No, it was just an escort service. Um, oh, wow. So he cheated on you with a prostitute? Yep. Oh, my. Yikes. So I don't know which one's worse. If yeah, he I know. had an affair, oh. that would have been worse. Or if this is the worst, I just don't know how to. <laughs> so he didn't um, just cheat on you. He put your life and your health at pretty significant risk. And I don't know if this is the first time it's happened. I'm just questioning everything. Um, of course, yeah. Like, You've probably heard me say this um, on the show. That's what makes that's what makes this type of of relational rupture so powerful. Is not only does it it dissolve what was right. So the marriage you thought you had is now over. It also dissolves your trust in yourself. Because like you said, like I've um, never even thought to question him. Never even occurred to me. And now I question everything. Every even time he's ever I been late. when I was late. questioning him, like I was sure what had happened. But I'm like, what if it comes, um, it's untrue. And what if I'm just blaming him on this? Like it's a big thing that I'm going to confront him with. Um, like my hands were shaking. Of course. I but I think, this, I think, no I think it's your body that knows everything's different now. Everything's different um, now. What what what, what did he other, say when you confronted him? Well, he just kept saying, "No, calm down. What happened? What did you look into my phone? What happened?" Just, I was like, "Just open your phone. I don't even have his um, passcode." Um, so he has like fingerprint, which we've spoken about it before, and it just comes as a joke, you know, that I have boys sending me. You know, they have their college friends groups and they have these videos and all that nonsense um, and I didn't take it very seriously so I'm like is, uh, were these the signs that I've been ignoring in the past and this is what it, so yeah he just kept saying no just calm down and then finally when he opens his phone I'm like who is this and he's like oh we went out with the friends and you know this happens and then I just started to get really angry when he, like, you haven't even apologized or anything and you're just making excuses. That made me even more mad. I just wanted him to admit it, but he did not until I proved it to him. Um, so I, at this point, whatever he said after that, I just don't know if it was to calm me down, if it was true. Um, yeah. What a mess. I'm so sorry. Um, he's saying he's ready to change because I, I, I was just going to take kids for a bit just away from him, yeah. you know, back overseas and just think about it. Um, he's literally begged to give him another chance. He will do whatever he, whatever I want him to do. I don't want that type of relationship. I don't want him to do what I, you know, want, even though I do, but not from me. Like he should know what he needs to do. Um, so how can um, I help you? What a mess. I'm so sorry. How can I help? So, um, I just need, this is more about me now. Now I'm just putting myself together. How do I deal with this situation? I've tried and I've got a referral for a psychologist for myself, um, before we go into marriage counseling, um, to just put myself together. Also, when I do have boundaries with him, say in future, um, is it going to be me too much asking about stuff like not going out with boys for a while until, you know, I feel okay post midnight or going to a strip club or, you know, things happen that way that night. He first went for a drink and then strip club and then carried on with all of that. Um, yeah, let, let me just I, hop in here. That's insane. That is nonsense insanity. I went out last night with a group of guys. We went and had dinner. We stayed out way too late. None of us ended up at a strip club. None of us ended up calling prostitutes. None of us ended up coming yeah. home and lying to our wives. That's not just a part of it. Those things don't just happen. That's what I'm thinking. That no, no, Kayla, you're, you're, you're not mind. crazy. It's madness. 
That does not just happen. Oh my God. That, that happens in the movie, The Hangover. That's it. And it's a movie with Zach Galifianakis. Hilarious, but not reality. You I'm set still out with intention. Myself about not giving him much time, um, just being after kids and, you know, my own life. I've lost my parents last year and I'm just in that mess dealing with that. Another thing is he knew I'm in a mess and he did that to me. Like, does he even care about me anymore? Yeah, the, the, chal- the, the challenge, hun, is it's not about you. It's about him. You have to deal with, you have to deal with the blowback, right? I mean, it's yeah. become about you. But this yeah. is a selfish, dishonest liar that you're married to. And I asked him, if will he leave his friends for me? He said yes. And then his, one night, his friend is in an emergency, which he released. He ended up in the hospital, the same friend that he went with. I'm, and now I'm like, it's not even his friend's fault. It's more him. I don't know why I'm angry with them. So I let him, he's like, I really need to go, is that okay? I'm like, yeah, fine. I even visited him in the hospital. Right. But do we, like, is it okay for him to be friends with that group? Here, here's the, here's the thing, have... Kayla, hold on. I'm telling you, I'm just going to cut cut straight to it. Is that okay? Yeah. Everything in your world's blown up. And if you've ever watched like a disaster movie, there's always a house that blows up. There's a house that blows a bunch of houses that blow up in a disaster movie. And they always cut to a scene where there's somebody just like trying to start picking things up already. And you just want to tell the person, well, just stop. Stop. And that's what I want to tell you. You lost your parents in the last year. Your marriage has blown up. You lost trust in yourself. You lost trust in this guy that you've leaned on. You don't know up from down, left to right. And you have to take ownership that that's the state of things at this moment. Okay? Yeah. Is it repairable? I have two kids. Yes. It's 100% there's a light at the end of this thing, but you got to sit in the dark for a minute. And yes, you're a mom. You're a good mom. And you know, I got to feed my kids. My kids got to go to school. They got to eat. They got to do these things. But I need you to know, you didn't blow this thing up. But you have to Mm -hmm. deal with this side of it. Okay? All of the questions you are asking, let me just sum them up here. Y'all are going to have to rebuild a brand new marriage from the floor up. And that's not a bad thing. That's probably a good thing. There is no firm foundation on a new marriage, on any marriage. That does, it's not built on trust. I trust you. I can rest assured that you're telling the truth, period. And so you're going to have to practice trust. What does that mean? That means month by month, you're going to have to say, I need to see your phone always. I need to go back and look at all the old records of our finances to see how many escorts you've contacted in the past. I need to know every time you've cheated on me in the last eight years. And if you lie to me, you're telling me with your language, you want this marriage to end. I'm going to tell you, I've worked with people who've made bad decisions for many, many, many years. And I can't think of a time that somebody out of the blue just went and hung out with their buddies and went to a strip club and then got prostitutes. That's, a, that's, that's an escalating pattern of behavior that happens over time. If your husband and his friends were one of the rare groups that this just got out of control and this just happened, okay, fine. I can, I'm, I could stand to be wrong, but I don't think I am. And yeah. if it was, that's when you come home and then you've got a husband on your front porch that's weeping so hard because he knows he just screwed up real, real bad. And that's not your husband. Your husband just came home nonchalant, went to bed, tried to hide it, lied to you, made you feel stupid. So. Yeah. To exactly. move forward at all, you have to start with the trust. And that means you have to say, here's what it's going to take for me to trust you. Not all the way. We got eight years to build that back. Here's what it's going to take for me to trust you today. And we're going to get through today. We're going to go to, to tomorrow. 
And some time with your kids away might be healthy for a season because you're so blinded by anger and frustration and disillusionment. It might just be important for you to take a step back. Yeah. It's not necessarily a bad thing. Do you want this marriage to keep, to, to keep moving forward? Well, if I it was 10 years ago, I would have never thought I would stay with a cheating partner like this. Yeah. But now for the sake of my kids, and I love him, um, I gave it a nice thought for a week. I, I didn't speak to him. I was so angry, just ignored, just did nothing in the house related to him. I thought I was going to go away, but it just hurt me so bad. I don't have anyone else, just him at this point. Um, you don't have a girlfriend or a, a group of friends you can call? Um, I do have, but I don't know if I want to tell them this. I don't want things to be repaired, and then I just don't want them to think he's a fool. I, he I, is. He's I 100%. Still, he 1,000% is a fool. But I want to tell you, 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 once you the, one of, the, one of the, the, the frustrating things about this is you start keeping secrets from people that love you and that you love. And this little thing that he did, it's not a little thing, this huge thing that he did, it ends up affecting every single relationship you have by yourself because you want to try to protect him. And then it, it affects the, the couple relationships y'all have. It starts yeah. to affect everything. And so I'm going to tell you, the, the fewer secrets you can keep with people that you love and trust, the better. It doesn't mean you get there and with, sit down with your girlfriends and gossip about him and talk about how awful he is and he's the worst. And blah, that's, not, that's not what I'm saying. That mean, That's yeah. you getting down in the mud with him. If you start stealing his passcode, if you start sneaking around, and not, then you're becoming him. You're becoming dishonest too. We're not going to do that. Yeah. We're going to keep our dignity and our respect. But having two or three friends that you can sit down and say, hey, my husband screwed up real bad and he blew up everything. And I don't know what is up and what is down. People can handle a lot, but they can't handle a lot by themselves. They can with people walking alongside them. Yeah. Um, I don't know what I'm doing all these days. I've I stopped work because of my um, boy starting school, but I'm just in the bed all day. I barely do anything. Yeah. I, yeah, I'm just not functioning right. Um, he is supporting me at this point, but I just don't know how, what future holds. Um, what am I going to do? If, if you um, find your, if you find yourself unable to get out of bed, if you find yourself a week later, two weeks later, three weeks later, and you can't eat, and you can't, and you're you're catching your breath, and you don't want to take a shower, and you just want to stay in bed, absolutely call a psychologist and go sit with some with a therapist. No question about it. Yeah. And you've already done yeah. that, which is really wise. Not because you're yeah. broken. I don't think something's wrong with you. I think your body has been through enough. There's enough the loss of your parents, the, the transition to Australia. Now your marriage has exploded. Your body has just said, I quit. I'm, I'm checking out for a season. So there's nothing wrong with you. Your body's working. The question is, like, this isn't the time right now. I got kids. I got to figure this out. I got I to start making plans. So let's sit down with a therapist in your local area and let's begin working through that but globally speaking if he doesn't come clean and tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth so help him god then anything you build moving forward is is built on a faulty foundation and if if um you don't give him a road if you say i'm gonna trust you i'm gonna stay in this marriage we're gonna rebuild this but you don't give him a roadmap back to your trust you're gonna get mad at him for not right drawn right on the right roads so you're going to have to say, as un-Hollywood as it is, I need you to do the following five things for me to trust you today. Love today looks like open up your phone. Love looks like you don't carry an ATM card for a while because I don't trust how you're going to spend our joint money. Love looks like me and the boys are going to go spend 30 days at a friend's house just so I can clear my head and even ask myself, what do I want? What do I need? I just need to get out of the haze of this house. It's being very, very clear with him. And that starts with you saying, I deserve to have some wants, and I deserve to have some needs, and I deserve dignity and respect. 
And since the man I married isn't doing that, isn't giving me that, I'm going to go get it. I am going to stand up tall and I'm going to demand it. You deserve that, Kayla. You deserve that. So, so sorry for all of your losses. I don't think your marriage is over. It doesn't have to be. But you're going to have to be very, very clear about what you need moving forward. And he's going to have to be willing to take a knee, both knees, and say, I'm sorry. I'm in the rebuilding process for the long haul. Hopefully he can make that turn. Hopefully you can too. We'll be right back. Here we are in the middle of Lent. Lent is one of the cornerstones of the Christian faith. It's a time of reflection, taking a hard look at our lives, prayer, fasting, and more. Lent is about finding meaning, purpose, discipline, finding connection with God, and finally, letting go of trying to control everything. If you've grown up in a Christian faith and you've heard about Lent and this year you want to jump in with both feet, or if you're not a person of faith at all and you've always wondered what your coworkers are talking about during the season, my friends at Hallow have created the 40-Day Lent Prayer Challenge. I went through the Lent reflection today on my own. It's already an extraordinary walk through 40 days of meditating and making changes in our lives. The 40-Day Challenge is about transformation, and Hallow has created a path with Lent-themed music, stories, prayers, and even some special things for your kids. I am personally going through the challenge, and I hope you'll join me and millions of others across the globe. Hallow is the number one prayer app in the world, and for listeners of the show, you get three free months of Hallow, all 10,000 plus prayers, meditations, music, and lecture series, and more, all of it, by going to hallow.com slash Deloney. That's three free months of the app at hallow.com slash Deloney. All right, we're back. Let's go out to Charlotte, North Carolina, and talk to the mighty Tori. Hey, Tori, what's up? Hi, Dr. John. How are you today? We're partying. What are you up to? I'm good. This is my second time calling you, actually. Two years ago, I was the L&D nurse that asked your advice for how to mourn when we lose babies. <laughs> oh, wow. Did I give you um, terrible advice? No, it was so amazing. I've sent that podcast to so many other like nurse friends when we've gone through things, and it was it's been so, so, so helpful. I'm so thankful. Well, you're a saint. I decided I'd call you back. You are awesome. You're testing my luck. <laughs> yeah. All right. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna take another spinner on the roulette wheel. So what's up? Okay. So when I called, um, I wasn't a parent. And now my husband and I are parents of a beautiful five-month-old baby boy. Congratulations. Um, thank you. It's been going really well. Really thankful for him. Um, and I feel like we're great parents together. We're in line in everything. My question for you is what do I do when my husband and I disagree on who will raise our baby if we were to both die? <laughs> <laughs> <It's> my... <laughs> so good. You're like, we agree on everything. We are perfect. Everything. What yes. do we do no. <laughs> if we agree not on the most important thing ever? Yes, um, absolutely. Okay, so one of you um, wants family, and one of you mm-hmm. hates the idea of family. Who's who? I think family is great, but I can't commit to it right now. I think it would, you'd be pretty – it's good comical relief if I was to lay out the family situation for you. Okay. Between so the two of us – He wants family? Ahead. He wants family, yes. Between the two of us, we have 10 siblings. Um, he's one of nine kids. I'm one of three. So you'd think at some point this would work out, right? Um, my small non-negotiable list is that I'd want someone who shares our faith, um, someone who shares our same views of money and financial peace, um, a family unit with a strong marriage, so no single parent situation. And then I'm from the U.S. and he's from Ecuador, so there's a little cultural clash here. Um, and I'd want someone that would appreciate, you know, both of those cultures that he'd grow up with both of those languages, that sort of thing. And my husband says, Nope, just family. So, yeah, you've, um, you've put a tall order out there (laughs) as well. well, And I want him to be tall and super good looking. (laughs) And I want him to be named Brad and Pitt. And that would be great. We happen to have two very great friends that we cherish, that we go on vacation together with that. We love a lot. I've never talked to them about this because I don't have the go ahead from my husband. Um, but he's from Mexico. She's from the United States. Um, and all convictions are there. And I'm like, they'd be a great option. And my husband's like, you're right. They're a great option, but they're not family. So it's a no go. Okay. Um, so here, so- here, here's, here's step number one before anything else happens. And I'm even going to uh-huh. press you um, before this week is over. 
Mm-hmm. You'll have to put somebody down on paper. Yes. You and I both work in jobs where we sat with people who the worst of the worst has happened. Yep. And you are, um, by, by doing nothing at this point, except just going back and forth, you're going to mm-hmm. let the state of North Carolina, which does not have a good track record recently of making good choices, right. be the custodian of your family. And then you're going to mm-hmm. have 12 brothers and sisters coming out of the woods. Right. All over the place. Yep. And you're going to have people disappear into their country. You're going to have a mess on your hands. So mm-hmm. even if it's of the best of the of a bad situation with family, pick somebody. Right, right. And then begin the discernment process or the what I would call yeah. the negotiation process. But you'll have to put somebody down on paper ASAP. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. I is that, agree. Is that fair? Absolutely fair. All right. Now. Yes. I want y'all to. Can y'all, can y'all, is this a civil conversation? Is it funny or is it starting to get kind totally of tense? Totally civil, yes. And okay. we're both like apologetic. Like, I think we're really good at sacrificing or, you know, give and take and stuff. And both of us are like, I'm so sorry, but I can't give up my convictions on this. Okay. Like, it's very civil. Okay. So I want y'all to go on a date. Uh-huh. And I want you to have a blank sheet of paper. And if you go to like Michael's or home, De- uh, not, uh, uh, not home Depot, mm-hmm. Michael's or, uh, crafts, et cetera, something like that. One of those places, uh-huh. I want you to get some really nice card stock paper. Okay. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I'm, I want, I'm do I'm telling you that cause I want this to be kind of a miniature event. Yeah. And at the top of the paper, I want you to write the word who, mm-hmm. and I want you to scratch it out. And underneath it, I want you to write what, Mm, yeah. It's very easy when we're going through who we want to keep our kid, picturing us being gone and our kids sobbing at a funeral, being held by mm-hmm. somebody. You can't do that without being just covered up with emotion, right? right. I can get choked up mm-hmm. in five seconds thinking of my kids. And when we get emotional about a who, it just clouds everything. Hmm. So the idea of, we're going to look at characteristics first. Mm-hmm. What, what do we want the people who would be in our kids' lives, what do we want them to embody, to inhabit? Who do we want these people to be? Mm-hmm. And then you're going to say things like faith. And is it faith, I just want them to be Christian, or they have to go to this particular building in this particular denomination? When it comes to finances, like, you got to follow the Dave Ramsey plan. If you borrow money... Or mm-hmm. I just don't want them to go from our place. They're going to burn through our life insurance and be in poverty. Like, what does that right. mean? Okay. Right. Um, mm-hmm. Cultural representation. Do you want them to like know a second and third language? Do you want them to travel? Do, what does that mean? What are we looking mm-hmm. for here? And then the exercise becomes who in our life can backfill that? Once yeah. you've gone through and laid all these things out, then you start plugging the who into it. And the, it does mm-hmm. change the equation. Mm-hmm. Then you land on, it, I tell you, my, in my house, um, what we went with ultimately wasn't family, which is surprise, mm-hmm. surprise. Here's why. Because my kids have now been six years in, um, in a state different than both of our families where they live. Mm-hmm. And so the thing that makes me the most worried about my kids is not that my parents or his parent or or my wife's parents or our brothers and sisters aren't going to be involved in our kids' lives. Of course they will. It's that on top of losing their parents, they wouldn't have a deep relationship with the person they're being dropped off to. Mm -hmm. And so we went with friends who we have a very close relationship here that my kids know, they see, they interact with on a regular basis. But if we Mm -hmm. had just started with, who would have started with family? It's got to be family. Which one of the family? Well, I don't know about that, brother. I don't know about that, sister. We would have started there. Right. Right? But by working mm-hmm. through the what do we want, we want our kids to have a relationship with, we want them to be comfortable, we want them to be close, we want them to the same schools. Oh, that's going to be here then. Right? And that changed the equation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What's your husband's... Yeah. Um, stranglehold on family has to be family it um uh i 
he has definitely had situations where he's been burned by friends in the past. And what he says um, just repeatedly is the case for him is, and he's like, I don't care if it's my family. I don't care if it's your family. Like as long as it's family, but he says no one will be as loyal as family. <laughs> like, I, I just can't trust anyone as family, which uh, I, you Ooh, know, baby. if we would go into the deep story, I have a very different perspective on that. Yeah. I, 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 I would tell him he's wrong family, on that I can one. pull out evidence. Yeah. He, yeah. He's I, wrong I, on I, that It's one. not logical. Yeah. But, and I asked him, I, I feel the same way you do about like, we just have to get someone on paper. So that we have to put someone we died today. Who do you want baby to go to? And he said his parents, and I love his parents. I'm actually like one of those really rare people that just super loves her mother-in-law, mm-hmm. but they're in their like mid to late sixties. Yeah. And I don't want my baby to go through losing his primary family, not once, but twice, you know? Yeah. So have you told him that? I feel like that's not a good, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. Here's another conversation to have. And this is a conversation my mm-hmm. wife and I have on an annual basis. This mm-hmm. does not have to be a one and done forever. Yeah. This can be, let's do one year. Mm-hmm. Let's do one year. And if it's that couple friend you're talking about, that's got more in common culturally, financially, spiritually mm-hmm. with you guys right now, um, yeah. it can be a matter, matter of sitting down and letting him just go at him. We're picking you guys. If y'all will say yes, if mm-hmm. you burn us, if you, whatever. And by the way, you can set stuff up in a trust to mm-hmm. where it's pretty specific from when, when you die. Right. right. So you can still have some control over that. I started mm-hmm. rattling all that off and my wife said, whoa, 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 whoa. If we're putting them down to take care of our kids and we don't trust them enough to need to buy, if they have to buy a car for them, like then we're not putting them down. Right. And right. I was like, oh yeah, you're right. And mm-hmm. that was just me trying to keep a bunch of control from the grave. Right. Which is, which is an anxiety response, but it's not really reality. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I think giving yourselves the freedom to say, okay, every year we're going to revisit this. Every year mm-hmm. we're going to revisit this. And maybe for you, okay, I'll put your mom and dad down this year. Mm-hmm. Next year, yeah. they're going to be one year older. Mm-hmm. <sighs> right? Yep. And then, and yeah. then, and then. Mm-hmm. How's that sound? Yeah. It sounds good. And I will say, and what I tell him too, like I agree, my ultimate goal would be family. Um, we have between both of us, five unmarried younger brothers. And just knowing some of them have dated girls I haven't really liked in the past, I'm like, I, I think three of those five are fantastic options and we'll see what, how time goes, you know, and who they end up with and the careers they choose and, you know, what they make of themselves. So I think, yeah, taking it year to year definitely sounds like it could be. Hey, Tori, do you know what I am right now? now? What are you? <laughs> I'm a YouTuber. <laughs> <laughs> If somebody had looked at my resume five years ago <laughs> and said, we want doctors Deloney, we want Dr. Deloney, the professor and Dr. Deloney, the Dean of students to be the <laughs> people who raise our kids. Yeah. Now it would be Dr. Deloney, the coach and author and gardener and Dr. Deloney, the <laughs> YouTuber who's desperately trying to get into a punk band. Right. <laughs> so, try, right. and I tell you, I tell you, Trying to predict what jobs people are going to have, what value, right. what church building they're going to go to. That's just I a think fool's just errand. Stability, though. Like, I know. I get it. I get it. Yeah. But it's also nobody's going to be the parent for your kids that you are. That's true. And some of it is leaving. I trust you guys here. I'm going to detail what I can in a trust. So my money goes X, Y, and Z. Here's my request for school and education and things like that. And then I just don't want to die. And a lot of that angst comes on the back end of that. Yeah. Does that make sense? It does. <laughs> and by the way, Tori, you're not going to, statistically speaking. <laughs> you're good. Maybe if I stress about it more, it won't happen, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just get really wound up about it all. <laughs> that tends to solve problems. <laughs> Here's what this means. This is this means that you love your little baby. And if you're like me, if you're like me, I didn't know I had the capacity. I I didn't know I had the capacity to love like this. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know what to do with it. And it made me angsty. Yeah. So I started playing whack-a-mole with every variable I could find. And that's not how love works. 
And it's the worst. I'm sorry. (laughs) Yeah. I'm grateful for you. (laughs) Thanks. Will you let me know how it, how it goes? Yeah, absolutely. Hey, so we're thinking about, um, I, I proposed to our products team here. I want to create a product (laughs) called talkabouts, um, or some Uh kind of like, it's like questions for humans, except it's about, um, important conversations like making a will and um like so we're gonna so you're getting divorced right like that'll walk you through some of these hard things oh wow yeah would a deck of cards of who we're leaving our kid to would that be helpful absolutely i yes i think i have all of your questions for humans and we've (laughs) gone through them only twenty seven thousand times and i would definitely get on that bandwagon too all right Uh, we're gonna i'm gonna tell everybody that i did some market research with an n equals one and we are definitely doing this moving forward it's been an honor to talk to you again tori i'm so glad that you uh reached back out um try a couple of those things i suggested but i think sitting down and saying what like let's let's do characteristics let's do ideals and then maybe on the backside or another paper, put fears. What are the things that scare us the most? And I, my guess is for both of you, the ultimate fear is somebody else's raising this little this little angel, this little amazing heartbeat of mine that's now out of my body in that crib over there. And that's just something you got to grieve through and breathe through. And, whew, and you got to go make the next right call. And give yourself some flexibility. Change it every year if you need to. Readdress it every year if you need to not a static one and done but you gotta get somebody on paper ASAP you're the best Tori I'm grateful for you we'll be right back I have to admit it I am a complete and utter fanboy telling everyone who will listen about my love for Organifi Organifi is an extraordinary company who have created the best powders and potions and gummies on the planet. I bought Organifi with my own money after several of my super smart health conscious beefcake friends kept ranting and raving, tell me how great they were. And now I take them every single day. My wife and kids are in on it and they are an essential part of our wellness routine. As you've heard me talk on this show, I take a number of supplements every day depending on what I'm trying to accomplish and Organifi has helped me reduce the number of supplements I take in total by bringing some of these things together. I was recently on a backcountry hunt in the Lincoln National Forest, and here I was passing out travel packs of green and red juice to my exhausted, depleted friends and family members. I always have it with me. Here's the deal. Organifi makes everything easy because it's a powder that you mix with water, and they also have some capsule supplements as well. And then you're off to the races, off to better digestive health, and off to deep sleep. And like I said, now I take Organifi every day, and some of my go-tos are the green juice and the red juice. The green juice levels me out and gives me critical micros that I need, and the red juice gets me ready to go get the day without mainlining caffeine. I also love the pure and gold drinks, the Shilajit gummies, and I just received the new sleep formulation that I can't wait to start using. Organifi is hooking up our show listener gang with 20% off all Organifi products, even the kids line. Go to Organifi.com slash Deloney or use promo code Deloney at checkout. That's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I dot com slash Deloney or use promo code Deloney at checkout. All right, let's go out to the City of Angels and talk to the great and powerful Fred. Hey, Fred. Hey, how you doing, doctor? What's up, brother? Thanks for taking a late notice call, man. What's up? Uh, No problem. Thank you. Um, So I got an 11-year-old daughter. Uh, divorce with their mom. We do week on, week off. I'm trying to figure out, um, she has an eating disorder the mom does. And I'm trying to figure out how I can uh, try to get her some help. She's fighting me help. Um, she goes to counseling. She's had a, she's in AA right now. And she kind of is throwing everything on AA, but her eating disorder she's had since she was uh, like 14 and she, she refuses to say that that's what the problem is, even though it shows that that's still the more powerful issue of, of them all. Is, is um, she an AA one. for alcohol? Correct, yes. What else does she use? Oh, uh, that's it. Just alcohol and in, in struggles with disordered eating with body image? Yes. Okay. How long? Um, eating disorder since she was like 14 Mm -hmm. 
she's 38 now. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the other thing is refusing the help that she's refusing to say that's the problem and trying to get to the bottom of it. Um, you know, is it something I should address with my daughter? I want Uh, you to, um, I want you to go sit down with a professional counselor and um, who works with teen girls mm-hmm. and have this conversation. Gotcha. Okay. Um, there's going to be a very unique set of skills that somebody who works with um, teen girls who struggle with disordered eating um, or who are in that environment. Mm-hmm. What the, the, your ex or the mother of your, of your daughter sounds mm-hmm. like she grew up in hell. Fair. Yeah. Yeah. And it sounds like she's got a body that's just trying to fight to stay alive every day. And alcohol seems to work and finding control over food and restriction seems to work. And those are the two things that as a guy who is doing life with her, you're watching it kill her too. Yeah. I mean, we're divorced right now. Yeah. Yeah. But you're still doing life with her cause you got a kid in the middle, of right? Course. Yeah. 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 Of course. Of yeah. course. And so, you know, as well as I do, you can't, you, there's nothing you can say. There's nothing you like. So like the, the energy you're spending, like she won't even admit it. Yeah. She's real, real sick, man. Right. It's, yeah. No, she'll admit it, but she just refuses to say that's what's causing her erratic behavior and, you know, her inability to cope with everyday situations that occur. Yeah. You know, where she just, she flips out, you know, and, uh, is your daughter safe? Yeah. 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 She's safe. Okay. Is she asking questions about mom? No, no. Okay. Does she know that mom is sick? Mm, she, she knows that she goes to AA, Okay. you know, uh, she knows that part of it. She doesn't know the eating disorder part. Okay. Um, but she knows she's aware of the AA. But when I, when I, is, is some of your wife's internal dialogue becoming part of the dialogue that that is translated to this 11 year old girl does your daughter say things like oh i don't want to eat that or oh i don't look good in these pants or i'm i'm feeling bloated or i'm too fat like does she starting with that language none of the descriptive ones that you just mentioned on the later but okay. where she's not eating this and eating that mm-hmm. but it's kind of hard because she just had like this food um food poisoning about six months ago, and since then, she's kind of been in fear of eating a lot of things. You know, she yeah. got sick after eating in and out, and now she's just like anti in and out. But she's anti, like really, she's she opens apart every piece of meat. Did you, you know, say she's anti in and out burger? Yeah, yeah, bro, get her into a hospital today. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, man. Here's the truth. Um, last I looked, it's been a minute. It's either number one or number two. Disordered eating is the most lethal mental health challenge. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. I, I simply don't mess around with it. Yeah, okay. And I've worked with, with young women um, for most of my career who struggle. And I just don't mess around with it because it's too, it's too, it's too you can do so much lasting damage in such a short period of time. And it's such a nightmare. You can quit drinking. You can stop being around alcohol. Yeah. No, I get it. I you got to make peace with food, well. right? She said it's, yeah, she said it's not as easy as alcohol. I, and I 100% agree. You know, and I and had you can't just stop. You can't just stop eating, right? You got to make yeah, peace exactly. with it. Yeah, it's a nightmare. Yeah, and I told her, I get you're in the worst area that you can be in as far as addiction. And I know it's not something simple like just staying away. Um, and no, not that, that, that that's simple in itself, but it, you know, it's not, you don't have that luxury of staying away, yeah. you know, and I get that, but. You know, she's just refusing to say that her battle with that is what's causing her behavior. You know, she'll well, blame and, it on money. She'll blame it on parents. She'll blame it on, you know. Is there, is there a chance she's, because you're, you're describing a bunch of erratic behavior. Is there a chance she's using something else? No, no. But she's on medication also, like, while Butrin and, like, three other ones. You know, and I'm just trying to point out to her that she's been on that for two years and you're still where you're at. Yeah. And it's not helping you know, so it's time for a change to try to find something else. The problem is, is that she's not 
I mean, y'all took a y'all took a form of legal separation, right? And so your responsibility as a human is to love and care for our neighbors, right? So you care about her and you want her to be well, if, if for no other reason that if she's not well, then your daughter's not going to be okay, right? Yeah, um, like that, yeah. Mm-hmm. But your immediate responsibility in this exact moment is to make sure my daughter's okay. Right. And if she's absorbing the chaos, if she's absorbing the tension, if she's absorbing the excuses and the this is how you control anxious feelings, um, and those are starting to become part of her nervous system, man, you got to get all over that ASAP. Yeah. And so I would sit down with a professional, somebody who can gently yet expertly navigate, hey, your mom is very, very sick. Your mom's yeah. Loves you and is a good mom, but she is really sick. So, yeah. So your recommendation is to open those doors to her, you know, verbally through help, obviously, um, to. Yeah. And her with if, the in, in the way, I don't know how it works in California, but my experience on the whole has been you'll have an intake with a counselor or, or a therapist. Um, and I would find one with an expertise in um, disordered eating with teen girls. And that's a hard group to work with. But, man, those who do it, um, I've met a few. They're, they're amazing. They're amazing clinicians. And um, let the, during the intake, let the, let the therapist know, here's what's going on. Here's what mom is struggling with. And here's some behaviors I'm starting to see. And I'm starting to watch my daughter walk down a path that I'm terrified as to where she goes and I need some, I need some help. And also y'all have to begin discussing. She's 12. I mean, 11, she's about to be 12. She's heading into her teen years. She's going to have to know the truth about mom in a way that is not disparaging and, and destructive because she still knows that half of her is that woman. Yeah, of course. Right. And so it's going to be a delicate balance, having a professional, a neutral third party. If this all goes South and she has to hate somebody, I'd rather hate somebody you hired than you. Ah, yeah. Great right? point. And so this therapist's job is to absorb some of that tension as the third party and say, here's the truth. I'm going to speak. And then on the way home, your daughter gets to cry in your arms. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. But also, this is just above your pay grade. It's above my pay grade. If this was my daughter right now with all my training, all I would go see somebody ASAP. Gotcha. Understood. It's just, it's too lethal. I don't mess around with it. But can I tell you this, brother? I'm proud of you for being a dad that loves his baby girl. Yeah, thank you. There's uh, too many dads who wouldn't step in in this moment. They would just uh, piss and moan to their friends. And more daughters need more dads like you. I appreciate that. To the ends of the earth for our baby girls, right? Yeah, absolutely. All right. I'm in, you're in. Well, thank you. I appreciate your time and uh, thank your staff for getting me on and, and getting some uh, words of wisdom. So I appreciate it. You got it, brother. Um, holler if I can ever help you guys with anything uh, moving forward. Um, man, it was an honor to talk to you, man. It was an honor to talk to you. I know it's a messy, 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 challenging situation. I'm going to have so many thoughts here. I'm just going to... I'm going to keep it to myself. Hey, when we come back, um, I, by the way, I realized that was like in middle school. I know someone who likes you, but I'm not telling. I get that. I just did that. So sorry about that. When we come back, we're going to be talking a social media clip that may have gotten me in trouble again. We'll be right back. Hey, what's up? Deloney here. Listen, you and me and everybody else on the planet has felt anxious or burned out or chronically stressed at some point. In my new book, Building a Non-Anxious Life, you'll learn the six daily choices that you can make to get rid of your anxious feelings and be able to better respond to whatever life throws at you so you can build a more peaceful, non-anxious life. Get your copy today at johndeloney.com. All right, we're back. So, Kelly, what do I do now? All right. We're going to keep the daughter theme going, by the way. Oh, good. All right, dads. Your daughter is watching and absorbing every single thing you do. How you treat your wife and other women in your life will directly inform your daughter about her own worth and value. You must do this one right. Treat every woman you meet with the utmost dignity and respect, always. This begins with her mom. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, this 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 is a post I wrote to myself about. Um, I, I'll just say there was. I was in my house doing something, and I caught out of the corner of my eye. Josephine had was coloring, and she had she listens to these books on tape incessantly. Uh, or books on tape because I'm a thousand years old. She listens to like the library app or whatever, listening to books. And she had taken her headphones off and put her color on, and she was just watching. And it was this, I could feel me being absorbed. She was learning and it was a heavy moment. She's going to find out is dad safe or not by how I interact with the world. She's also going to find out what does dad think of how he treats women? What does dad think of women globally by how I honor the waitress, by how I say things in the car like that woman's stupid or she just needs all of that goes into this build this this sidewalk that my daughter's going to walk in which says walk on which says women are worth what and she gets that from me lesson number one right and if i do this right then when some knuckleheaded guy when some politician when some something is said or spoken or put into the world she's going to step back onto a firm foundation that I built that says, no, 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 no. Here's what your, here's how your dad treated women, starting with the two most important women in the world to him, your mom and you, and then his mom. And if my mom leaves and I'm like, God, oh, I'm so glad she's gone. I'm building, I'm building a, a world for Josephine to inhabit. And so it was just this moment of me reminding myself, dude, Every word you say to your wife, to my wife, every conversation, every disagreement, that little girl's absorbing this and it is deciding, her body's deciding, here's what you're worth, here's what you're worth, here's what you're worth, and just never uh, underestimate that responsibility. My husband uh, did this, this was never a discussion we had or anything, and uh, one time with our son, he said something to me mouthed off. I don't remember exactly what it was. And he said, my husband turned around and he said, you don't get to speak to my wife that way. Oh yeah. I've had and I was just like, I, I love mean, you. Yeah. <laughs> and I've also heard him say whenever my son was, uh, either one of my kids had mouthed off to my mother-in-law who was a saint. Um, Robert would also tell him, you don't talk to my mama that way. Yeah. And he was very clear about this is my wife and my mother and you don't get to disrespect her that way. Right. And I loved that. Yeah. And it was something that, I mean, I was like, I don't know where that came from, but do that. Yeah. It's just fantastic because it teaches them right then and there. This is not just your mom or your grandma and you're not going to speak to them this way. Yeah. Because I won't allow it because I honor them. But and, and, and it also contextualizes like, oh, that woman over there, that girl that I want to hook up with, that we took a call on a previous show, like those Porn stars that are in your husband's phone next to the pictures of your daughter, that's somebody's sister. That's somebody's mom. That's somebody's wife. And there's this reverence about that that I need her to experience, not just hear me run my mouth and not just like buy her flowers on Valentine's Day. It's bigger than that, right? Um, but all of it starts with how I treat mom, her, her mom, my wife. And... Um, I want her first impulse to be when the first time a guy treats her bad, which I can get choked up real quick. It's going to happen. I want her first impulse to be, that's not right. Cause I've seen it done right. I have felt it done right. And that's not right. And that's what I want her to know. I had that example growing up because my dad treated my mom fantastic. And I watched them flirt and oh, play. Crap. I'm getting all choked up. And so, but I knew that growing up that I was not going to put up with anything. I didn't yeah. have to. Yeah. And right. so that makes a difference. Yeah. yeah, it does make a difference, you know, just so you know what you're doing works because I've grown up that knowing that way that I'm not putting up with that. Yeah. I don't have to. I'm worth a whole lot more than that. Maybe she'll become a uh, famous YouTube producer and not take any crap off. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Not take any crap off. <sighs> there we go, America. As the great John Mayer says, fathers, be good to your daughters. I don't remember the rest of that song. I just remember he says that. Because daughters will love like you do. Is that right? 
daughters grow up to be mothers, so mothers be good to your daughters too. What a song that is. John Mayer, dude. It is everything that I would like to do just a thousand times better. I'm glad I'm alive in the era when he's alive too. Love you guys. Stay in school. Bye.